Hi, James here. Uh, on my lunch break and I'm just going through the last lot of my backlogged emails so you know this is the last lot now um, and normally I get sort of music and DJ related questions but um, this time I had a few that were a bit sort of off subject and different um, but that's fine like I say I welcome that like I said in the other video if you've got any question at all ask me and if I know the answer I'll tell you if I don't know the answer I'll find somebody who does anyway um, this one I thought was uh, it's quite possibly the most random question I've got, but I like it, it's cool. Uh, this is the email. I printed it out because I find it easier to see when I print it out rather than looking at it on the screen. Anyway, right, hi there. Uh, I know this question is a bit out of the blue and maybe a bit random, but I just wanted to ask to see if you knew. Uh, I heard somewhere that smoke alarms have radioactive material inside them. Is this true? And if so, are they dangerous? Uh, I would just like to know because I've got like six of them around my house and I'm a bit worried about it. Thanks, Aiden. Well, Aiden, um, there's not really much to be worried about, to be honest. Um, it's true, though, they have got radioactive material inside them. Uh, I've got a smoke alarm here. and. Uh, only the smoke alarms that have got what's called an ionising chamber. So if yours are the um, photo um, chamber smoke alarms, i.e. they've got an optical sensor to detect smoke, they won't have any radioactive material in, but these ones do. They're called ionising chamber, so check it out. It'll be written on the top um, what type of smoke alarm it is. And also, if you open it up, you'll see inside here there's this little black bit here. I don't know if you can see that very well. There's a little black bit here. Now, ionising chamber um, smoke alarms do have radioactive material in them, but the material that's inside them is called americium-241, and uh, it emits mostly um, alpha particles, which can be stopped literally by a piece of paper, and <clears throat> they can't even penetrate about 30 centimetres of air. So as long as you're more than a few feet away from it at all times, even if the americium was exposed, you still wouldn't be in any immediate danger. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so if you open it up and have a look inside here, all right, if we just uh, open this smoke alarm up here, now you can see this black bit here, this is called the ionising chamber. And if you look on the top there, you can actually see at the top it says um, radioactive, and then underneath it's got americium-241 and it's got some chemical equations on each side and crap that you don't really need to know but basically yeah inside this part here is a tiny little bit of americium 241 and I mean it's a tiny amount um, if you have a look in there can you just about see that little circle there in the middle of that is a little tiny dot and that is the americium 241 it's underneath that little dot now, a lot of people have asked me before uh, this question, you know, what, um, what, why is it in there? Why is, this, why is there radioactive material in there? Surely they could find something else. Well, the reason why it's in there is because it's fairly inexpensive and also it's better at detecting small amounts of smoke um, from a, a flaming fire. Whereas the other type, you can get the optical sensor ones, they're better at detecting large amounts of smoke from, say, a smouldering fire. Um, ideally, the best ones to get are the ones that have got both an ionising chamber and an optical sensor. Um, they're a bit more expensive, but you know they're worth paying out for. Now, just a quick note as well: um, these things have to be changed because you change the battery. I think they say you should change it every eight months to a year. Uh, most of them will beep to let you know the battery's going flat, but change it anyway. Eight months to a year. Um, test it every now and again to make sure it works, there's no battery in this one. And um, also you should change these once every 10 years because these things only have a 10 year reliable lifespan. Once it gets past 10 years it's unreliable and it's dangerous, get rid of it, get a new one. They're cheap nowadays, you can get them for like less than a tenner. Seriously, it's not worth putting your life at risk. And you're probably thinking, well, how does a piece of radioactive material make a smoke alarm work? Well. The way it works is actually really, really simple and it can be explained in like less than a minute. Basically, you've got two metal plates and you've got the americium. Now, what happens is between these two plates, the americium actually causes the oxygen and hydrogen in air to ionise between these two plates. 
and the smoke detector can detect a small charge in between these two plates. Now when you get smoke between these two plates it disturbs that ionising process and the charge is lost and the plates are then separated. That causes the smoke alarm to detect a drop in current, sets the alarm off, simple as that. So basically yeah, it, all it does is just gets in between the plates and the smoke causes the charge to drop in between the plates. But you have to have some kind of radioactive source in between them two plates for that to actually work. So that's why it's in there. So there you go Aiden. no smoke alarms aren't really that dangerous as long as the americium stays inside the smoke alarm and you don't go fast about with it. And like I say, if alpha particles can be stopped by a piece of paper, it's not going to penetrate your clothes. And so the parts of your body that are very sensitive to radiation, i.e. your Jacobs, are going to be protected. <laughs> anyway, right, uh, I hope this video has been a help and I hope it answers your question. Keep your weird and bizarre questions coming. I love it. Excellent. Thank you for watching. Nice one.